basement, we're gonna go down, down into an area where uh, Parrot Creek comes together with this little unnamed tributary that runs through the property. Off Central Point Road in Canby, Oregon, Allie Ryan Hansen leads us through her family's land. And this is the part that's gonna be a little splishy, which is a very technical term. These trails and waterways, her family keeps as a natural habitat for bees and fish. My family's done quite a bit of work to protect the health of these streams. Like planting native plants to keep the water cool. Um, to do things that would encourage, encourage the fish to make homes here. It's fish like steelhead trout that are born in fresh water and journey to the ocean where they spend much of their lives before returning to creeks like this one to spawn. So that habitat is really essential for them and their life cycle. But if you're not part of Ali's family. Almost there. It's gonna be the grossest part. How would you know the importance of this creek and dozens of others across the state? The Oregon Department of State Lands just released this new map, marking in yellow all the critical fish habitats. This year's map adds more than 100 stream miles across the state that are current habitats for sensitive, threatened, or endangered fish. Anybody who cares about coho, chinook, steelhead, any of these species that are really essential to our way of life here should take a look at this map. Oregon law protects these streams and requires a permit for most projects that would upset these waterways. So that property owners like my family can have really good information about what's essential habitat so that we can work with state lands to get permits to do things like restoration projects, to put in culverts, to put in ditches, so that we can all be a team in protecting this really important habitat. It's also a map to warn people who fish to be aware. Not all habitats are like Parrot Creek. They exist in larger, well-known rivers too, like the Columbia, the Willamette, and Clackamas River. According to this report from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, the number of Chinook salmon returning to the upper Columbia River this year is above the 10-year average. This map can be a tool for people who are responsible for taking care of a landscape, and it can be a tool for people who are responsible for enjoying a landscape in a way that is gonna be good for fish. In both busy waterways and hidden ones. Oregon protects this habitat because it's incredibly important for these fish that are so important to us as Oregonians. And if you love spending time outdoors along streams and rivers like so many of us do, it's so important to be aware of our surroundings. So to find that fish habitat map, just go to our website, kgw.com, search for this story, and we'll have a link to it there. Now, I briefly mentioned that NOAA report. Here it is. It shows this year is predicted to be a record year for salmon returning to the Snake and Upper Columbia Rivers. Now, that's partly because of an above average amount of the young salmon that went to sea in 2023 have survived. They're now adults and are heading back to these freshwater habitats to spawn. Another contributing factor is what's called strong spring upwelling. That's when winds blow along the coast and push surface water offshore, creating cooler, nutrient-rich water, which salmon love. And it's not just salmon coming back in record numbers. The same goes for adult steelhead trout returning to the Deschutes River during the 2024-2025 run, which ends this month. This video right here is of steelhead releases from earlier this month. The Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs and Portland General Electric are co-owners of the Pelton Round Butte Hydropower Complex. Together, they've been trying to reintroduce ocean-going salmon and steelhead to the Deschutes River. After more than 50 years of not having these fish pass through, well, their work has paid off. This year, more than 950 fish passed upstream of the dam, meaning the Upper Deschutes Basin is now home to more steelhead than any time since the 1960s. Biologists will continue to monitor the adult steelhead released upstream to track data around where they go to spawn.